Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, my name is Emmanuel, and in today's video, I'm gonna be teaching you about arrays. So what we're gonna do basically is to play around. I'm gonna show you a couple of things that you may or may not know about arrays and ways that you can you know, work with the data in an array, okay? So first of all, go ahead and create a blank project. What I have here is a simple playground. And the first thing we're gonna do is to create an array. You can create an array of numbers. And here, we're gonna specify some random numbers. So I'm just gonna, oops. So I'm just picking random numbers here. Let's do negative and another negative. All right. Nope, too much. All right. So let's say that we wanted to sort this array. So if you are used to for loops, what you would probably do is write a for loop that goes through numbers. So like create a for loop with index and then you go through numbers and then you create a nested loop and then you go through numbers plus one. So basically what you wanna do is get your current number and your next number, and then you check if the next number is greater than the, the current, then you wanna move, or if the, if the current is greater than the next, you wanna move that to a temporary one and then swap. So anyhow, it is it's just a lot of work. But what we can do with Swift is we can actually just go ahead and let's print this. We can say um, sort, and here I'm gonna say numbers dot sorted. And if you go ahead and run this, you would see that just like that we have this sorted from the lowest number all the way to the highest number, all right? And this is really good. So let's say ascending, and let's say we wanted to do the same thing, but this time we want to go from the highest all the way to the lowest. How do we do that? So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this and then here say descending. And here, what we can do is specify, or oh, we're gonna sort by something, by a specific condition. And the condition we can use here is saying, so we're gonna open the curly brace and say dollar sign zero dot, oh sorry, dollar sign zero, I mean the current number should be greater than the next number. So um, dollar sign one. So dollar sign zero is the current, dollar sign one is the next. So we wanna sort this given that the current number is greater than the next number. So that's what's gonna happen here. The current is always going to be greater than the next, all right? And this is gonna do the sorting like that. Pretty good, pretty easy, just a single line of code. Now, let's say that we wanted to maybe find out or find out the sum of all the numbers in this array. How can we do that? Well, again, if you're used to for loops, you probably create a sum. Oh, this will have to be a var. And you're gonna have to specify an initial value. And then you say for num in numbers. And what you would do is say sum plus equals num, right? And then at this point, you would print sum. So how many lines of code do we have here? So this is 3,202, and we have one, two, three, four, four lines of code. Now let's see how we can do this with Swift. We can go ahead and say print, and here we're gonna say sum is numbers dot reduce, and with reduce, we're gonna first of all specify the initial value like we did here, and then the next thing we're gonna do is specify the operation. So I wanna perform an addition. So I'm gonna leave this code here just to make sure that they match. And you can see that the um, code is actually correct. So uh, you can see how just a simple one line code just made life really easy. And one beautiful thing is you can actually go ahead and change the operation. So you can change that to minus and the value is gonna change. You can change to multiplication and just do all this kind of stuff. So um, yeah, let's change it back to plus because that's plus. Now, let's say that we wanted to find out all the, or basically extract all the even numbers in this array. How can we do that? Again, if you're used to for loops, you would say you create a for loop and then you check whether the number um, is an even number. So maybe the number divided by two is um, equal to zero. So sorry, the number modulus two is equal to zero. So um, how can we do that with Swift? Easy again, so we can go ahead and say, um, even numbers and here we're just going to say numbers dot 
And what we're gonna use here is filter. So basically we wanna filter and get all the numbers that satisfy a specific condition. So the condition here that we wanna use is to make sure that it is an even number. So what you can do, again, is say the first, the current number, and say um, modulus two is equal to zero, right? So if we have this and then we run this um, app, you can see that now we have all even numbers like this. The beautiful thing is that you can actually go one step further and make this cleaner and say this dot is, mult is multiple of two. Now, if you run this again, you would still have the same thing, right? And this, you, can also, you can also go ahead and make this maybe multiples of three and you run this and you have like that, right? So um, you can see just again, very simple line of code makes things easier. Now, let me show you another thing, which is, I would say maybe my favorite, but is one that you would use a lot is map. So we have an array like this. Let's say that we wanted to convert the items in the array into something, maybe something of a different type, or we wanted to perform some operations to each item and return the exact array. So let's say, for example, here, I wanted to multiply each item by two, okay? So if you were used to for loop, you would, again, go through, maybe create an array, go through each item in this array, and then you would multiply it by two, multiply the current item by two, and then append it to the new array you're creating. But with this, what I could do is just say numbers, numbers, and I can say dot map. Actually, I should add something. Let's say map or multiply each item by two. And here I'm going to say numbers dot map. And what exactly do I want to do with each item? So whenever you're in this curly brace, just think of it as you have a single item. What do you want to do with that? So here, the first item, which is the current item, what I want to do is I want to multiply this by two. And the same way you can actually do whatever you want. You can decide that you want to change the type of this data. You want to, you know, add maybe a dollar sign or do something, which I, I guess I would just show you in the next line. But for this, I want to multiply everything by two. And you can see three times two is six. This one times two is that. This one times two and like that. So it's going to do whatever condition you have here to each item that you have in your array, and it's going to return the result as an array. So one thing that you would note, um, or one difference you would note between the map and the filter is that for the map, it is always going to return the same number of items in the array because it's going to go through each item and then do something. But for the filter, it may or may not return the same value. So depending on the condition that you have here, um, the number of items that will be returned could be more or could be less. Like you can see in our example, we have um, two items returned, but here we have, I don't know how many, but whatever number here, okay? So just like I mentioned earlier, you can actually do whatever you want. So let's say I wanted to add um, currency here. So let's say add currency. And here, all I wanted to do is to add a currency. I don't want to do um, that stuff. So we can do string interpolation. And here, I'm just going to go over to the beginning and then add the dollar sign. So one thing you would think of here is that this has been converted to a string. So here we just did a multiplication. So the type is going to be basically the same thing. And then we multiply by two and returns the array. But here, we're actually changing the type. So this is not going to be returning a number. It's going to be returning a string, right? So you can now go ahead and run this. And you would notice that each item in the array has is now a string. So it's no longer a number. It's a string that has the dollar sign um, at the front, OK? Now, these are very simple arrays. And of course, there are many more things that you can do to your arrays. But before I end the video, I want to just show you a more practical example of um, how you use like some of these in a real application. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a struct. So 
let's say I want to create a struct and call this custom number, all right? And in the struct, I have a um, value. So I have a constant called value, and this is an integer, okay? Now, let's say I wanted to create a another array. So now this is going to be um, custom numbers. And to create an array of, I want to create an array of custom numbers. So I'm just going to copy that. And here I'm going to specify the value. So I can just go ahead and do this. And we're going to paste some more. Blah, blah, blah. Nope. And I'm just going to put some random numbers here. Minus three, um, four, say nine. Um, 17. Okay, so now we have an array. So in the past, we're working with an array of numbers. Did I miss something somewhere here? Okay, so we're working with an array of numbers, but in the, in the real application, we probably more likely will be working with an array of a specific type. So an array of a struct, an array of a class, or whatever. So how exactly can we do these kind of things with um, uh, an array of a struct? Because if you tried something like this, let's say we wanted to do a sorting and then we say, um, or nope, custom stuff. So let's say that I wanted to do, I wanted to sort this array and then um, sort them in order, just the same way in ascending order. So I should actually just copy this. So if I try to do custom numbers dot sorted, now, this is not going to work because it doesn't know exactly what we want to be sorting by because this is just a, imagine that there's more attributes like a name or some other IDs or whatever. What exactly should I be sorting by? So here, what you can do very, very easy again, like you see in the second one is to specify what exactly you want to sort by. So here I want to sort by value. So this is basically going to try to sort and Actually, I need to specify the condition. So let's say, um, yeah, so in ascending order, so this dollar sign one dot value as well. So basically, we want to sort using the value. So now, if I were to run this, you're going to see that we have some things. Now, I know this doesn't make sense because, well, it is a custom type, so it's a struct. And these are like instances or objects. But you can notice here that we have the value. We can see the value that this is minus three, this is two, this is four. It goes in ascending order. But what I wanted to mention here is that you need to specify exactly what you want to be sorting by. So we want to sort by the value here, the same thing here. So if you wanted to do the same thing for the descending, right? What would, what would you do? Go ahead and just invert the sign, run this again, and you would see this, okay? Now, this doesn't make sense, right? We don't, we, we can exactly easily see this. So how exactly can we convert this, right? Now, if you look at all of the um, things that we mentioned here, one of them that can really help us convert this is what? Can you guess? Yes, the map. So how exactly can we use map to convert this from this object or not exactly convert, but to extract the number from the object? We don't need the entire object. We only want to display the numbers. So how can we do that? You can go ahead and write a print and here and say um, numbers and we say custom numbers dot map. So what do we want to get from here? I want to get all values. So basically return all values of each item. Now, if you run this, you would see the exact array that we have right here. Okay, so this is 2, 22, minus 3, and like that. And just like you probably have guessed, you could decide that you want to map and then do something else. So let's say I wanted to sort. I can do this and just say sort it. Now, because this is going to return an array of numbers or an array of integers, sorted can work because it knows that each item is an integer. So just convert, I'm sorry, um, compare all of the numbers.
Now, if we run this, you would notice that now it goes from the last one to the greater one. And the same way we did this by mapping and then sorting, we can decide to sort and then map. So, and what we're actually doing here is called chaining. So we're chaining different um, operations together. So here, I just say map value. And if I run this again, you would notice that now we have the exact same thing. Okay, great. Now, before we end the video, there's one more thing I'd like to show you is with the reduce, because this was actually one thing that confused me um, initially, is how exactly can I use reduce with a custom type? Because you notice that here, where's the reduce? We basically just specified an operation and it just figured everything out. So how can we do that here? So if I wanted to use reduce or calculate, calculate the sum, what I can do is I can say the custom numbers dot reduce. But now, again, I have to specify my initial value. And here, there are two ways we can actually do it. And this actually works for the others. But for now, I'm going to, or let's actually just show you this way first. So we can go like this, where the first item is the partial result. And the second item is the current number. So you can actually just call this current number. Okay. And what we can do here is say what operation we want to perform. So I want the partial result. Partial result is basically the result at each um, iteration. So at this point, the current result is three. At this point, the current result is three, two, four, seven. At this point, the current result is, uh, sorry, partial result is whatever like that. So partial result is the result at each step. So here, I want to do the partial result plus the current number. So this is going to, oh, did I miss something? Let's see. Oh yeah, actually. So this is the current number, but let's see if this shows. Current number, like you can see here, is of a different type. So this is of custom number. So remember, we cannot add an integer with a type of custom number. We need to add it with a number as well. So what is the number in custom number? You say custom number dot value. And now, if you go ahead and run this, this is going to perform the sum. I don't know why this error stayed. But anyhow, this is going to perform the sum, and you can see that the sum is 51. You can try to do like a minus, run this, and like that. See, it's minus 51. So you probably have guessed this, but we can actually do this same syntax for every other place where we have something like this. So generally, I just like to do it like this so it stays like a one liner. But if it's easier for you, you can actually separate them into um, a closure and then pass in like a variable, a human, whatever variable you can understand, and then do this and say in. Otherwise, what you can do is to just go ahead and do like this. And we already saw that the partial number is the first item. The second item is the, is the um, current number. So what I can do is say dollar sign zero, this is gonna be the partial number, plus dollar sign one, which is going to be the current number. But remember that this is of, a, of this type, custom number, and then just say dot value. So if you do this and you run the sum again, you would get the same value. And if you wanted to do a minus, you go ahead and get this. If you wanted to do maybe multiplication, and start from one, run this, and things just work. All right, so um, these are the ones that are, I would say, top of mind, and you would use in many cases, well, one that we definitely forgot to, to do is the count, of course. But uh, I'm sure you've used this so much that uh, it probably doesn't count anymore. So it's just like saying custom numbers don't count. And this tells you how many items in the array. But if you have other um, ones that you use that I didn't mention, then go ahead and let me know in the comments. Um, if you found any of these confusing, then also let me know. I, I'm probably able to explain better. But um, if anything was confusing, for sure, let me know. And uh, that's it for this video. Um, see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. Yeah.